What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be briefly talking about escaping closures, what they are, how to use them, and why they're important to understand. So here we are on the Swift uh, documentation website directly, and we're in the section for escaping closures, and I'm not, not going to bore you all and read all of this, but the idea, to set kind of the tone for this video, the idea of an escaping closure is the scope of the closure gets escaped by marking it as escaping. So here you can see there is this function that is taking in this completion handler and it's marked as escaping. And this completion handler parameter is being appended to an array of what presumably is other completion handlers. And the takeaway here is that the closure here, the function that we're being, uh, that's being passed in can be appended to this and it can escape the closure uh, scope of this function. So this is one good example and there's actually other examples as well down here, but instead of looking through this, let's go ahead and write our own code. So go ahead and destroy that like button as always for the YouTube algorithm, helps out tremendously. If you're a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it, get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some escaping closures. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and instead of a project, we're gonna come up here and go to File, New, and we're gonna to stick to a playground for this video. We're gonna stick with a blank playground and I'm gonna go ahead and call this Escaping Closures. Go ahead and continue. And let me just expand my Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's also bump up this font size. So cool. So let's go ahead and first create a function of uh, get data. And it's just gonna have a very basic completion handler on it. Uh, and this is gonna return, let's say a bool if we got the data or not, uh, and void. So this is a very simple example of a function that takes a completion handler. So let's go ahead and you can call the completion handler like this with a true or false uh, Boolean being passed back. So what, what do we gain by adding the notion of escaping here? Well, like I briefly mentioned in the beginning, we can now have this completion handler escape the scope of this function. So what does that actually mean? So let's, let's learn that with an example. So let's say we want to actually get data from a network call. So like an API call, let's say we want to use URL session shared data task with URL and completion, this guy down here. Let's go ahead and just create a, any random URL since we're not gonna actually run this. And completion has data, a response, and an error, just like that. And let's say we, we realize that the data is not nil. And once we realize that, we wanna say, uh, completion is true. Let me just say task resume to kick off the task. So here we have a completion handler coming back for our actual API call and we want to call our completion handler here saying, hey, completion was successful true. And if, uh, you know, data was nil for whatever reason, we're going to say completion is false. Let's uh, change this to a nil check to get rid of that warning. Bear with me. All right. So this is problematic and hopefully an error pops up in a second to explain why it's problematic and there we are. Escape enclosure captures non-escaping parameter completion. So from a technical perspective, that's completely correct. From a layman's terms perspective, this is useless. What the heck does this mean? This is basically saying that the scope of this completion handler that URL session is gonna return uh, is different from the scope of this function. And we're trying to use our completion handler in the URL sessions completion. And this is run asynchronously, uh, presumably on a different thread. 
So without going into the weeds of threading and different processes, what we need to do here is we need to add, add escaping to this. And so what this allows this completion parameter to do now is escape the scope of this function, in which case now we're able to pass it into this URL sessions completion. And that's, that's all there really is to it, right? You can pass the scope around. So let's take another example. So let's say we have a class. Let's go ahead and create a final class called API caller. And let's say we have a function in here that's called warmup. Let's see, it just performs some, uh, some tasks for us. Uh, and once it's warmed up, we want to, let's say, set a Boolean saying is ready. And all the other API calls need to make sure that is ready is true. And let's say this warmup itself, uh, you know, is an API call that takes a little while. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna throw a completion in here, um, a completion, actually we just leave that for, for now. Let's just keep the example simple. So let's say we wanna use this API caller. Let's say we have a function in here called do something and that do something is going to return, once again, completion. And we're gonna make an at escaping closure, just like that. And let's say here we say API caller dot do something just like that. And let's say here we wanna make sure if, we wanna make sure is ready is true. So we're gonna say guard is ready, otherwise return, otherwise call the completion handler, right? Makes sense, fairly simple. Now, every place on our app that would need to go and call this function now has to handle the edge case of is ready might be false, in which case this function has not finished executing yet. So how do we solve this with an escaping completion handler? It's actually quite simple. So what we can actually do now is introduce an array on here, similar to the example you saw on the Swift documentation website. And it's going to be an array of completion handlers, just like that. And what we can do here is we can say, let me actually call this completion handlers. We can say completion handlers dot append completion. And we can say completion in here like this because it is escaping. And if it wasn't, it's gonna complain. Hopefully that error pops up just like that, saying you're trying to escape the scope of this completion and append it into an array and it's a non-escaping. And as soon as we add escaping back, we can go ahead and uh, see that this will go away. Let's see, expected else. That's actually a different error. Let's try that one more time. If we get rid of this, you'll notice that this is gonna start complaining that it's non-escaping, just like that. Once we add it back, it goes away, just like that. So how does this actually solve the problem? So this solves a problem because, you know, hypothetically, once this function returns, what we can do is we can say, if completion handlers is not empty, we can iterate over all of the completion handlers and we can execute them. And dollar zero in this case just refers to the given element. And once we execute all of them, we can just remove them all. So the beauty of this setup and the, the power of escaping is you no longer need to explicitly check for this bool every time, regardless of if you call this function before uh, warmup is completed, it'll be handled. So if you call it before warmup is completed, it's gonna basically queue up your closure into this array. And once warmup completes, it's gonna go ahead and execute them. And you know, if this is already completed, it'll just go ahead and call your completion handler directly, just like that. And the assumption here, once again, that I'm making is warmup itself has a completion handler, which we didn't type out here, but that's fairly important for the sake of this example. So that's really it. That's the notion of a completion handler. They're used all over the place in apps from uh, you know API network calls, from other heavy tasks that you will need to run on a background thread, for a whole slew of things. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button as always for the YouTube algorithm, helps out with engagement quite a bit. If you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, uh, if you don't understand something, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I try to answer every single comment within reasonable time. And of course, hit subscribe while you're at it if you found the video useful. Keeps you motivated to create more videos for all of you. Lets me know uh, that you know the video is helpful 
for you all. And uh, it's something that you want to see more of. So once again, thanks guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one.